Now, News 13's Inside Sports with Ron Futrell. Well, hi, everybody. The Rebels are in danger of not making the WAC tournament here in town this year, but thank goodness they have BYU and Air Force in their division. Those are the two teams that most likely will be left out in the Mountain Division. Tonight, UNLV needing a win against lowly Air Force on the road. Rebels having to play without one of their big men, Kaspar Kambala, who was suspended for whacking a Wyoming player on Saturday. Keon Clark playing against guys about my size. Drives and kicks it up. Tyrone Nesby who hits the Rebels' first three-pointer of the game. Rebels by three at halftime. In this game, baskets as rare as the air in Colorado Springs. Late in the game now. 57 to 50 UNLV. Air Force goes on a run to tie the game at 57. Jermica Reese with the basket. And the Falcons have flown back into this one. In fact, they have a chance to win in the end, but Reese misses. Rebels rebound. Kevin Simmons is fouled. And that's it. There's your ball game. Simmons hits a couple of shots from the foul line, and the Rebels win at Air Force, 59-57. Saturday, Wofford comes to town, and I'm not making that name up. They are not a community college. They are ranked 290th out of 306 Division I schools. Elsewhere in the WAC tonight, Utah cruises by their rivals to the South BYU. You got New Mexico looking strong against Wyoming. Colorado State wins at UTEP. Tulsa takes one at home against Rice. Tubbs beats Tark tonight in Fresno. Two teams that like to score a lot of points here. They're also two of the top teams in the WAX Pacific Division right now. Okay, it's been seven years since the Rebels were a number one team in the nation, taking on number two Arkansas. Remember that? Well, tonight it was number one Duke traveling to number two North Carolina. The Tar Heels taking charge from the start. Shimon Williams with a bucket right here. Actually, he misses it, but Vince Carter is there for the rebound. Yeah, that's the way it goes right here. And North Carolina leads by 16 at the half, but almost blew it in the second half when Duke goes on. A 25-9 to run to pull to within four. But the Tar Heels hold on, and the celebration begins. 97-73 was the final in the blowout. North Carolina wins a battle of number one against number two. Other games in the top 25, big upset here in the Pac-10 as Oregon beats number six UCLA. Number four, Arizona, no problem with Washington. Wildcats are looking good right now. Number 14, Arkansas takes care of Mississippi. It's Michigan, 74 Northwestern, 67. Cincinnati tops the fall, and George Washington, 17 better than LaSalle. NASCAR's pit stop at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway is less than a month away, and as Mario Diaz tells us, the country's fastest growing sport is also gaining speed at the sports books around town. <laughs> For years, NASCAR's been making its noise on the track. It's on the lead lap. But last year, the sport increased its octane, fueled interest in another area, sports books. I started putting up last year, we always did put the Daytona up, but then I started putting the rest of the races up, and each week I just saw progressively more and more people get interested in it. I mean, people would come up and ask for it, and it was a definitely a, a big thing for the properties. And I think in the future, it's definitely going to be a bigger, bigger thing. Is it good for the sport? I don't know. Um... I guess if you're a gambling person, you could, you know, you have you have a chance to win or lose. I think it's great. Um, you know, I mean, that's what Vegas is all about. So uh, I think we'll probably be doing a little betting when we come back here. I don't pay no attention to it. I mean, I'm here. I'm a race car driver. I want to win races, and uh, hopefully, people are betting on me. The main objective is to win the race and then really hit the town. Betters though like hitting the town with a little more extra change in their pockets. And betting NASCAR may just be the answer. Mario Diaz, News 13 Sports. All right, the race, of course, sold out. It's March 1st at the Speedway here in town. Kathy Ken. Thanks, Ron.